Leeds United against Burnley, a game which going into it, I'm thinking these are two teams that are definitely going to be in the playoffs, challenging for top two. A result today would have meant a lot. And I felt like we showed up in moments, but not for a lot of the game. Yeah, I completely agree. It kind of looks like rinse and repeat of last season where you can be in control almost of a game. But then apart from the two clear-cut chances that we had, not creating an awful lot, but having a lot of the ball and they didn't really threaten and just architects of our own downfall. Yeah, it's a strange one because we actually defended quite well and you mentioned the, the two chances that we had, both of which came in the first half. In the first minute, Matteo Joseph nicks the ball back, gets through one-on-one -on -one and absolutely skews it. He's done excellent to get the ball and create that chance for himself and it was really early in the game, but I'd just say... If that's if that's Bamford, then he's getting hung out to dry. But because he's the young prodigal son, nobody really bats an eyelid. You've got to do better in them situations. Yeah, and that would have completely changed the game. If we go in and we score, based on how little Burnley did for the rest of the game, admittedly for a lot of it they were winning. Yeah. But we defended quite well, kept the ball quite well. It's just those missed chances. And it goes it does go back to last season. We can have all the expected goals in the world. We can have all the one on ones and say we were the better team. But if we never come out with three points, it don't matter. There's only one stat that matters at the end of the day, and that's the score line, essentially. You can have all the possession, all the um Le like the least expected goals against you, most expected goals for, but at the end of the day, if you don't come away with three points, if you don't come away with the result, then what does it actually matter? Exactly. We're not in football for stats. And nope. then also in the first half, Willie Nonto had a pretty good one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, and it was a great incisive pass from Brendan Aronson, probably one of the better players on the pitch for us today. I think he's, he, he was fantastic. And I mean, I'm sure we'll cover it, but him getting dragged off for Joel Perot, I just thought the decision was questionable. Well, should we talk about Aronson for a minute? Because we said after the Portsmouth game that we yeah. think he'll have a good season. We think he'll do well in the championship. It's a different level to the Premier League. Mm. And I obviously put that out and got a little bit of a hated reaction. Yeah, of course. People yeah. saying, oh my God, no, he betrayed us, whatever. And now people seem to be kind of turning the page a little bit. Yeah, it's like you said, we're a bit of a step ahead with that. I mean, quite a lot of people who have a head on the shoulders realise that he'd be a good player for us and an asset in the championship. But, he, I mean, he's just been voted as player of the month for August and that's a fan vote as well. So that just shows that people are it, liking the fact that he's just pulling up his socks and cracking on with it. But he was definitely one of the more creative players for us today, one of the better players. Yeah, I think in terms of a player who can actually get on the ball, has the confidence to hold on to it for a minute and try a risky pass, yeah. taking Aronson off for Pirot feels completely pointless to me. Pirot adds nothing to the game. He's yeah. decent at finishing. We both said if he'd, have come, if he'd have come on up top as a replacement for Joseph, it'd have made a lot more sense, but it, it just didn't add up for me. It's not a like-for-like -like substitution, is it? Like you take, say you take your Solomons off and you put, Ramazani on, then that's a like for like change. They're both wingers and they're both like getting at it. But Piro is, is not a 10. And what Brendan's doing in the game is, like you say, he's taking time on the ball. He's trying to make these passes into the final third. That's not what Piro does. If he gets a half chance in and around the box, then brilliant. You kind of do want it to fall to someone like him. But it's just not a like, like, like for like change. It should have been a straight one for Joseph, probably. You mentioned Solomon there, and he was, unfortunately, at fault for the Burnley goal, which yeah. obviously they clung on to, so effectively them winning the match. Yeah. I know I said in the moment, because it comes from a corner, he tries kind of turning instead of just passing it or whatever, yeah. miscontrols it, puts Burnley through. And I said at the game, well, sometimes you've got to take those risks in order to actually turn that into an attacking moment. Yeah. But he was just unlucky, on it? I'd can't really slander him too much for that because at the end of the day if his little twist turns turns out then we could be creating a chance from it but it's, it is unfortunate and it's just one of them things like it's just a, a goal we've conceded from our own mistake it's not like brilliant Burnley play is it Burnley didn't play brilliantly throughout this game to no. be honest I mean a team just coming down from the Premier League I've said it to you coming I know Ellen Road is a, a big place to come in the championship but to not even attempt to play. It just didn't seem like it to me. That Trafford in net, he had us on strings all game. Fair enough. If he's my keeper at, on an away day like that, you're loving it, aren't you? But it's just, even in the first half, I mean, we what, 20 minutes into the game and you're just slowing the game down, not wanting to play football. I mean, for me personally, I think it's embarrassing. Yeah, I agree. I don't really know what Scott Parker's style of play is. Obviously, we've seen him with a few teams in the Championship and in the Premier League for a little while. But to me, that just felt like 
Burnley. That was Burnley. And that's what yeah. I am always imagining, have always seen from Burnley, just nick a goal and then just waste time for the rest I'm of the game. Grind it out. And I'm interested, yeah. like, if there's a Burnley fan watching this, let me know, like, leave a comment. Is this how it usually is? Like, so far this season, is this what's happened under Parker? Because yeah. obviously I'm not out here watching every single Burnley match, but it, it seemed really boring. I mean, I'm not... I've not watched enough of them to say either, but you've got to, you've got to see. I think the one they've scored four in one game that they won, and the beat. I've, I don't I don't know who it was when they scored five as well, but I think they scored five goals and had an expected goal like xG of like zero point eight. So it goes back to what we're saying though that games aren't won on statistics like that. Mm. But it just they did not impress me at all. They really didn't. I mean they've come away with a win, but I just was not impressed. Yeah, I agree. But I do also think for that goal after Solomon's slip. It was a very good finish. Still had a lot to do. do yeah. you know what I mean, he's in his own half and he's run the whole way, and yeah. he's, he's had to finish it off. So fair play to him. Yeah. But and, and he planted yeah. it in the bottom corner. The only question mark around me for that, I understand from Bogle's point of view, is kind of try to cover for the pass across and yeah. cover him. But I felt like he just did neither effectively. Like he yeah. may as well have just come and put a challenge in and let yeah. Meslier deal with the shot because at that point he was just pointless. Just commit to one. Yeah, like him being the last man with pace should mean that he can yeah. sprint back in time to challenge. I agree. You've got to, like, as I've played in defence myself, when that situation, like, opens up, I agree with what he did initially. Like, you've got to kind of make make yourself wary that he might make that pass. Mm. But then it got to the point where Stroik, I think it was, who come back and covered a lot of ground to get back, you've got to commit then. And then even when Stroik looked like he'd come back, he, he was still caught in two minds of whether he should stay or whether he should go. And you've just gone, kind of got to make that decision a lot earlier and we'll punish for it. I'm a bit worried about Bogle, to be honest, because I heard online from Sheffield United fans when we signed him that he's not actually a very good defender. He's just decent going forwards. Mm. And I thought, well, he's played like hundreds of games in the English leagues. He must be okay. He, he must be all right. But from what I've seen so far... I'm not liking the look of him defensively. And even going forward, I don't think he offers that much. Of course, he's still a very new signing. I'm not saying it's game over for him, but I think it's been a rough first couple of weeks. It has. And we've spoke about it as well, what the Sheffield United fans were saying about lacking defensively. And in games when we're probably going to be in complete control for a bit, like it's brilliant to have a player that's good going forward. But I think you said the exact same thing. Out of your two fullbacks of Junior Firpo as the more defensively sound one, then you're in fucking trouble, aren't you, when you come up against a decent team? And yeah. they were a decent team, like in it in a sense where on the attack they did look really dangerous. But I just don't think we're we were superior in every aspect. But we've lost, so Who would your man of the match be for Leeds today? I know that's a tough question when it's a one nil loss. I mean, Brendan Aronson. Mm. And that's why I was really absolutely just baffled by him getting taken off Joe Perot. The fact that Aronson came off makes no sense. Yeah. But also, Daniel Fark, we, we've said it before, and I, I, I'm intrigued to know what you think, because in my opinion, he just offers nothing tactically. Mm. Like, when I watch us play and we score a goal or we have a good game, I never think, oh, Fark's done really well there. Yeah. Like, it's not his team set up that has created opportunities and stuff. It's just players that are good. I mean, if you look at it on the on the flip side, you could look at Scott Parker and, I mean, we've said things about him, but you could say that he got it absolutely spot on today because he, you come to Ellen Road and you think, we're not going to have that much of the ball, so we're just going to try pick, we're going to try take our chance when it comes and then we can see out the, see out the victory. Mm -hmm. And that's what you look at and you think that's, I wouldn't say a masterclass, but that's just good management. And with Fark, like, he relies too much on individual brilliance. And if you've got a manager that relies that much on individual brilliance and you sell three of your most creative players, what the fuck do you think is going to happen? Yeah, you just know it's going to go downhill this season in a certain aspect. And you hope that the players that we've brought in, despite not costing anywhere near as much, despite, yeah. you know, we, we don't know as much about them, they do look decent so far. Yeah, and I think they could come good. But it is a bit of a risk. And I think... I was listening to the Kinnair interview on the Square Ball podcast the other day and he mm. was saying how we've still got the second or third highest valued squad in the championship and one of the highest wage bills. And it's like, well, yeah, we do, but we're much worse off than last year still and no. that doesn't change those facts. And that goes back to how I see us how and how we play. It goes back to these lot of looking at football on paper. Mm. They're looking at these stats, they're looking at XG against and XG for and all of this, hypothetically, is brilliant on paper. It's fantastic, but football's not played on paper. It just isn't. And you've got to get results. And at the end of the day, I think the spend, that's that's the attitude of our backroom staff. And clearly the manager as well. 
that we think, oh, we come away with all this possession, all this XG, what mm. this, that and the other, and think, oh, well, we're just unlucky. Or oh, last season, we'd have gone up with 90 points if it was any other season. It's not any other season, it's this season and we didn't go up. So stop looking at football on paper because it's not how it's played. It's played in the fucking grass. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, we'll chat about the second half, half a little bit because even in the second half, we didn't create many out-and-out chances. But I actually thought up to about the 65th minute, we were all over them. We were by far the better team and we were constantly attacking, but there just there was a pass missing. We just couldn't quite get that final bit in. That bit of quality in the final thirds, and that's where we have struggled, even last season, and then you get your Somervilles popping up with a moment of brilliance. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And it kind of looks like the same kind of thing, where you're just in control of the game. You've, you're in there half constantly, but there's just that, that last bit... Yeah. Just being cynical. It's that lack of movement, the lack of a plan, in my opinion. I think the best chance, if you would even call it that, or opportunity we had in the second half was a Matteo Joseph shot from the edge of the box. And, and it was a decent save in the end. Yeah, Trafford made a couple of decent saves today. Like They were they were good. He looked like a good goalkeeper, to be yeah, fair. He's a good young keeper. You yeah. had an Ampadu with a bit of a pot shot from the edge of the box that could have crept in, but he's had to tip it over. I mean, it's just kind of like a half chance, not like a full chance, but... He, yeah, it is. Well. It's rough, but we're still early on in the season. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. I am worried that we're just going to creep back into old seasons, hab- last season's habits, whilst having worse players. And I don't know. I, I I predicted us at the start of this year to come second, and now I'm having doubts about that. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, like you said, it, we're we're having a bit of a, a mourn here, which is normal. We've just lost a game mm. that we feel like we probably should have won. I mean, I'm not worried in that sense. The only thing that kind of gives me a little bit more confidence is the fact that the league's just not as strong as it was last year, I don't think, in my yeah. opinion. And the top end won't be. I mean, you look at Burnley, who've just come down. I'm, I'm so sorry, but... What the shit? <laughs> but obviously not because they've just beat us, but they just did not impress me at all. Luton have got one point from the first four games. Mm. And who else was it? Sheffield United, they look decent against Hull, but Hull are just... God yeah. knows what Hull are doing. Well, Hull have fallen apart. But you see it? what I mean? Whereas last season, you see Leeds, Leicester, Southampton all come down. I know we didn't have a great start, but we were just the powerhouses of that league and Ipswich were an anomaly. Mm. This season is just not as strong. So I think we'll still be okay. And it's still early days, so we'll just have to see. Yeah, it's scary times. So, I mean, we've mentioned Burnley a lot of times. But after seeing them today, where do you think they'll finish? Playoff spots. I don't see them getting out of my eggs. Yeah, because you, you alluded to it earlier. I think as much as today they didn't impress me, and I thought the the tactics that were employed were pretty boring and poor, they still did come away with a win. And if you're a Burnley fan, you're thinking, we just went to Ellen Road, who finished third in the league last year. As I say, I have one of the most expensive squads got a goal and just held on. Yeah. And when I say held on, we didn't exactly, we weren't exactly getting good shots in all the time. Yeah, we had like they, two or three. I mean, they weren't playing though, so they, yeah. they held on. And that, you're exactly right. You don't, at the end of the day, when you look back on a season, you look at this game at Ellen Road, they don't remember how they played, they just remember they got three points. Yeah, it's a huge win for them, isn't it? Massive, yeah. And it, it's a big disappointment for us. And it's a tough, I mean, the championship's always tough fixtures, but I think in the next couple of weeks, we've got, what is it? Cardiff away, which is a big journey. Coventry, Norwich, yeah. uh, Sheffield United, uh, Watford, so, flying. Yeah, but yeah, Leeds a disappointing day, sad times. Yep. But as we say, early in the season, if you're a Leeds fan, if you're a Burnley fan, leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the game and where you think your team will finish this season. Because I want to know from both sides. Burnley obviously didn't look too exciting today, but have picked up some good results. Before they this, scored and goals. Yeah, yeah. This, this is a good result. And then Leeds, I feel like we're swinging in roundabouts at the minute, but it is what it is. Yeah, we move on, don't we? Yeah, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.